hope everybody's having enough wine. I did pay for this with my credit card, and I want to thank you all. I get a free round trip ticket around the world. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of the back factor. Right. And again, the takeaway is cheese is their perfect food. This is important. <laughs> What was your first food? What was your only food for the first several weeks or months out of your life? What part of your what part of your life so far were you most popular? First few minutes of your life, right? And it's all downhill after that. I was not thinking that was the answer. All right. Next. Next point. What part of your life were you growing faster, smarter, and most beautiful? That was happening when you were on that all milk diet. When did things start to go wrong? Vienna sausage. Even before Vienna sausage is when you started to introduce fruits and vegetables. Beware. So for those of you that are concerned about uh, high fat in cheese, let me say this. The fat that, you're, that you put in your mouth does not necessarily end up around your waistline. Our bodies have grand designs of the foods we eat. Fat has had a bad rap. And part of my mission is to set the record straight, not only on behalf of cheese, but on behalf of fat. Fat rules. <laughs>
What is the sheep's own cheese we know of that we like? No, but manchego. Manchego is one. Also arati. Also the pecorinos. Pecorinos from Italy. Those are all sheep's own. Yes, Mary Virginia. Roquefort is also a sheep's own cheese. Never mind. Roquefort. Oh, great. You just said that. And where do these where do these nutrients come from? It all starts with the land. And if you have the nutrients that are off of the land, this is where it comes from. We Americans are so disconnected from our food sources. For example, I drive through these places that are agricultural lands where we have eggs, we have we have beef cattle, we have corn, we have tomatoes. I go to the grocery store and the food came from five hundred or a thousand miles away and it ended up in a can in a package. What's wrong with this picture? And so I'm looking at just simple economics here. I don't want to have to pay for the transportation, the distribution, the packaging. I want to just get it from right there. I'm glad to hear that you have a farmer's market here. I'm sorry to hear that it's closed when you have a long growing season right here in northern Louisiana. So you should be able to have it. I hope you support it when it comes back. Those of you who live here, I know that some of you come from farther away. And when would it start to the end of May? But you have strawberries and you have asparagus and beans and all kinds of stuff that are probably available much sooner. The progress of Western civilization follows the history of cheese making. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for cheese. <laughs> Things didn't start to happen and start until we started to learn how to harvest the mammalian milk. <laughs> we were not very smart way back then, but we learned how to harvest milk, and then things started to advance very rapidly. And it started with sheep and goat milk. And why sheep and goat? Because the sheep and goat were a lot smaller and easier to tackle. And it also started in parts of the world where sheep and goat could do pretty well, but not the cow. Because a sheep and goat can tolerate harsh streams such as Louisiana, but not so much the cows. You don't see a lot of dairy cows down here. They, they're okay, but they prefer to be a little farther north. This is a sheep. That's something like that. This is a sheep, and a lot of dairy farmers look at sheep and they say that they're not very smart. But they know how to behave, and they know how to give some of the best milk available. So go for your sheep's on cheeses. Again, you get different kinds of nutrients from different kinds of milk types. I prefer also, some of you mentioned that you prefer the soft, some prefer the harder cheeses. The Scott in me says, go for the hard cheeses. With softer cheeses, you're buying more water. That's what the dairy farmer wants to sell you, is water. That's why milk costs us the cheese. More water. Milk can be anywhere from 80 to almost 90% water. And cheese has very little water. Even Parmesan Reggiano has some water, up to 40% water in weight. That's on the high end. So they are selling you water. That's why you want the harder cheese, because you have more of the protein, the fats, the minerals, and the vitamins. We can credit the Romans for advancing cheese making. Because the Romans took cheese making methods they learned from the Middle East, the Fertile Crescent, they brought them to Rome. They started recording methods of making, as they did with all agricultural products. They started writing detailed treatises about how do you make this kind of cheese. They recognized cheese as a medicinal. They recognized cheese as a very important nutrient. And this is over 2,000 years ago. As the father of, of, the father of Western medicine uh, said, Hippocrates said over 24 centuries ago, let your food be your, be your medicine, let your medicine be your food. We here in the United States, we like to treat diseases with pharma, big pharma. I don't own a lot of stock in big pharma, but I hear it's a real good deal right now. But I hope that we learn how to eat better, because if we eat better and feed our children better, we'll all be healthier, ultimately. Amen, brother. Amen.
So the cows were not as small, so they're a little bit bigger to tackle, and the cows were not in the region where dairy first started in the Middle East. So the cow's milk cheap, the cow milk was harvested later. That is a cow. This kind of cheese baking still occurs today, but the cheese that were made from the milk from those ewes. The cheese that are made from these kinds of views is no longer legally available here in the United States. I'm sorry, this brings out the tea party in me. I don't want my government to tell me what kinds of cheeses I can eat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I want to eat a young, unpasteurized cheese from Provence, let me have it. I love going to France. I love going to Portugal with where this is. But I should not have to go there to get my cheese. And it's also unfair to cheesemakers here in the United States. Max for president. Oh, thank you. As I said, America has become a net exporter of cheese. We are we're number one in so many ways, but we are a net exporter of cheese and we're also the greatest producers of, producers of cheese. And surprisingly, Germany is second. Italy's not even number three. One thing that's interesting about the geology of Italy, it kind of reminds me of the geology of California. Talking about uh, the Sierra Madre, we're talking about the San Andreas Faults and all that. Uh, I have some land for you in Northern California on the coastline. Right. But uh, Italy's about the size, same size as California, but these are the major producers of cheese, and we have countries over here you wouldn't expect, like Egypt. What kind of milk would you expect they would be uh, providing in Egypt? Camel milk. Yeah. It doesn't taste very good. <laughs> There are a lot of myths about cheese out there, but the biggest myth is it'll make you fat. Uh, the, and, and a second biggest myth is it's a heart attack on a plate. There, there are nutrients that are available in cheese well that will help to keep your heart running smoothly. They will help reduce incidences of atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis. It will also help to moderate your cholesterol levels. I have my cholesterol levels checked periodically because I think it would be an occupational hazard. My HDL is 110, my LDL is 67, as of a month ago. And that's pretty good for a 93. Genetics, true. Well, okay, so it's genetics. It's certainly have great genes. And fortunately, I have the great genetic genes in the name. Thank you. All right. Attention. All right, my final salvo. All right. I have these great Gaelic genes with a little bit of German genes. I'm a mutt, actually. My families have been in this country since before the Revolutionary War. But if you have these genes, you're, you're able to drink a lot of booze. All right? Yes! Yeah. Good genes. Good genes. And good genes can also allow you to eat a lot of food without putting on weight. But compared to my younger brothers, they outweigh me by anywhere from 40 to 80 pounds. And their stomachs are much bigger than mine. They're much younger than I am. There is about seven year difference between me and my next younger brother. And I have more hair on my head. And the hair on my head has more color. And I can beat any two of them up. All right. So eat cheese and be mean.